with him. So hi, welcome everyone. Let's begin. Um, my name is Sayed Muyuddin. I'm going to be your host for today. And today's uh, today's topic is top 10 job skills while migrating. While you're looking for a job abroad, these are the top 10 skills that are in demand right now. Okay. So during this session, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't hesitate. Don't um, don't think that I'll get upset. If you have any questions, if you think of anything, please feel free to ask. Okay, if you think I'm going too fast, if you're, if you're confused about any topic or if you did not understand anything, please go ahead and ask and I will be more than happy to repeat myself. Okay, so today's topic, that's top 10 job skills while migrating. Again, my name is Sayyid Mayuddin. I'm going to be your host for today. And let's discuss about today's agenda. What are the things that we are going to cover today? First, migration growth. Why migrating abroad is growing. Top 10 countries that are hiring right now. Top 10 skills that are, that are in demand right now. White collar jobs versus blue collar jobs. Okay, so these are going to be our agendas. Now, starting with introduction, my name is Sayyid Mohyuddin. I am an industry leading, leading expert in recruitment for last 10 years or 11 years now. I have worked in different countries like India, America, Canada, Australia, South, Amer South American, different countries in South America and UK region. I have hired multiple people in these countries. I have started my career as a junior recruiter and I, over the time, I was able to climb the corporate ladder and currently I'm working as a head of operations and head of HR management in a reputed company in Hyderabad. So let's begin with our first topic. That is migration growth and the reality of it. A lot of people do talk about migration, how good it is to move abroad for a position or for education, etc. But what are the different challenges that people face as well? What is the ground reality of migration, of moving abroad? Okay, so let's first talk about the growth. Okay, more than 281 million international migrants are currently working in different countries. Okay. That is more than 28 lakh people. Sorry, more than 28 crore people who are moving to different country, who moved to a different country and working uh, in different this country. Them, and this and number is on a yearly basis. So this number is growing on yearly basis. Every year, there are 3.6% more people moving each year to a different country maybe to look for a job or for better education. Now, there are about 67 million people who are currently displaced by conflicts or also because of COVID-19. Meaning people had to move without a choice because of maybe conflict, maybe because of war, maybe because of COVID-19. Most recent example is the Ukraine and Russia war. Because of that, a lot of people have been displaced, ha had to move to a different country as well. More than 250 million people is expected to move or migrate due to global warming by 2050. Meaning in next 30 years, more than 250 million people will be moving to different countries or regions. Now let, let's look at the numbers. Over the years, what was the status of migration? Keep in mind, these all these numbers are in millions. Okay. So in 1960, 60 years ago from today, there were only about 75 million people who migrated to different country. But if you compare that now, 60 years later, the number has more than quadrupled has increased four times, meaning exponentially. We have seen exponential growth in migration. People are moving more and more every year. So these are the numbers per decade. You know, in 1960, there were about 75 million. 1970, there were 81 million. 1980, 99 million. 
1990, there were 155 million people who moved. In 2000, 177. In 2010, 221. Now, in this decade of 2020 till 2020, 30, sorry, 2020 till 2030, there are like 281 million people who have already moved and a lot are moving. Now, let's talk about top 10 countries which are hiring right now. And what are the origins and destinations of these countries? Now, starting with USA. USA is the number one country right now which is hiring migrants. Most migrants are moving to US from various different countries. We will look into those countries in a minute, which countries are producing those migrants. Currently, right now, the US is the number one acceptor of migrant. Number two is Germany. Now, apart from US, Germany accepts a lot of migrants abroad, both for education and for jobs. Next is Saudi, then you have Australia, France, UAE, Turkey, India, China, and Thailand. So these are the top 10 countries who are hiring migrants right now from various different countries. Now, each demography has a different region, different kind of acceptance. US has a very different process and US require a lot of different sets of skills. These days, the booming skill in US right now is software industry. If you are a software, a software engineer with, uh, you know, background maybe in java in python in data management or in program management project management or you know various different kind of uh, software skills currently data data management or data engineering or data science is the number one software skill but any other software skill as well there is a great prospect for you to get a job in us especially for software engineer Germany accepts a lot of mechanical and electrical engineer. One of the most famous thing that German, Germany is famous for is German cars. All the biggest hypercars or sports car brand came from Germany. Brands like Lamborghini, brands like Ferrari, etc. Germany accepts a lot of mechanical and electrical engineers. And these days, number at number three, apart from electrical and mechanical, constructions engineers are in huge demand in Germany. Now, Saudi is a completely different story. Saudi is more about skilled labor than unskilled labor. Now, you have to understand the difference between skilled labor and unskilled labor. Skilled labor are most, most of the time is going to be your blue collar job or jobs that require specific skill, skills. Jobs may be into construction, maybe into various different kinds of electrical work, mechanical work. A lot of positions are into skilled labor but you have to keep in mind there is a distinguish between a skilled labor and unskilled labor position and saudi is more about getting skilled laborers getting apprentice apprentices main focus of saudi is towards construction carpentry electricians mechanics linemen masons plumbers hayback so these are the specific skills that Saudi is hiring right now. Now, next comes Australia. Australia is mix, is going to be a mix. Australia considers a lot of skilled and unskilled, plus they have a diverse amount of positions open. That is why Australia is one of the preferred position, the location for Indians to move because they have a lot of different positions, including skilled labor, like the ones that I've just men mentioned, like electricians, mechanics, construction workers, etc. All these kinds of positions. But apart from that, 
Australia is the most favorite place for CAs because there are a lot of positions for CAs, chartered accountants, and people who are planning to pursue MBAs. Again, Australia is again their one of their favorite destination. Again, Australia also does does provide a lot of software positions as well. So they have a diverse environment. They help multiple different skills to be migrated in their country. Next comes France. France, again, just like Australia, they are a mix. They accept skilled and unskilled labor, both blue collar and white collar job. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these countries have a language requirement. So you have to be familiar with their language. Next is UAE. UAE is again exactly same as Saudi. They prefer more towards skilled labor. People who are into construction working, mechan mechanics, electricians, plumbers, linemen, etc. But apart from that, UAE is also becoming the business center hub which means a lot of blue collar positions are also in demand. Positions like nursing, teaching, positions like chartered accountants, positions like recruiters, positions like sales, business development managers, sales managers, etc. So again, UAE is turning. Right now, their preference is skilled labor, but again, other positions, especially blue collar, sorry, white collar jobs are getting preferred as well gradually with the next five years those positions are also going to be extremely in demand next is turkey again turkey is all about skilled laborers but due to the economic crisis they are very picky about selecting people so getting a, a position in turkey is going to be very hard but again if you have skilled experience that includes like electrician mechanic plumber etc turkey there is a great chance you can easily get those positions. Next comes India. India is again a mix. India prefers both skilled and blue color, white color jobs. India has a lot of construction demands. India has a lot of electrical, mechanical demands, as well as India has a lot of engineering demands, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, construction engineer, software engineer. India is producing most number of software engineers each year. Next, you have China. Again, China is more focused towards skilled labor. So you can see there is a trend. Most countries in this list are leaning towards skilled labor. So again, China, China is uh, more about skilled labor and specifically towards manufacturing. If you have experience in manufacturing as a manufacturing technician, manufacturing worker, manufacturing associate, or anything related to manufacturing, there is a great chance you can get a good position in China. Next is Thailand. Thailand is also trying to be the business center of the world. A lot of businesses have moved to Thailand or Singapore. So again, there are going to be mixed positions open, but for these days, Thailand has a lot of teaching and nursing positions open. So if you have background in that, Thailand can also be a good place for you. Now, again, keep in mind, different countries have different hiring criteria. For example, in US, you have to have specific skill sets and number of years of experience in that specific skill set to get an entry visa. In Germany, you need to be fluent in their local language, that is German. So apart from English, you need to learn German to get an entry for maybe for education or for job. Saudi, it's not required that you learn Arabic, how to speak Arabic, but it is highly recommended so that you can communicate well with the locals. Australia does not have any specific language preference, but again, Australia do require specific education. They do value specific education, area of education and experiences. So if you have specific education, like, a, uh, you know, CS certification or an MBA, something like that, you will get a preference or you have good amount of experience in accounting. Again, that can be a preference for them. France, again, they have a language preference. If you need, if you want to get a job in France, it's highly recommended that you learn French. 
you learn how to basic at least basics basic friends so that you can communicate with the locals again coming back to uae it's not recommended it's not required but again a lot of people do recommend that you un please understand basic arabic so that you can speak with locals but keep in mind in uae you will find a lot more people who are going to speak uh, a mix of hindi and urdu or english so language barrier is not going to be as big as problem in uae compared to saudi turkey again they don't have any specific language preference but they have high demand skill experience they look for a lot of people with high amount of experience in specific skills india as we all know india is a very diverse country we have hundreds of not thousands of different languages india does not have a language preference but depending on the the demography depending on the position that you're going for you might require different job skills china again in china it's mandatory that you learn at least basic mandarin that is basic chinese for basic communication with their citizens or locals again thailand does not have any specific criteria as long as you are looking into areas like teaching and nursing and you have proper certification proper education it is very open right now now these were the top 10 countries that were hiring right now now let's talk about what which are the top 10 countries who are producing most labor who are exporting or sending most people so as you can see from this map you can understand that these are the areas who move to different location and as you can see most people prefer to move to us next is canada or russia or australia south africa countries like saudi uae china japan so these are the, the different demographic demography where people are preferring to move these days now let's talk about us us has been the main country of destination for international migrants since 1970s us has been the target for most people to move maybe for education or for the job since 1970s since then the number of for of, of foreign born people residing in the country has quadrupled from less than 12 million to 63 million in 2020 in 1970 there were only 12 million people in us who were uh, who were from different countries residing in us living in us but by 2020 the number quadrupled to 63 million people again it shows that us is the most preferred region for migrants to look for a position for a job or for education Now here are the countries who produce most number of migrants for US. Mexico. Mexico is a neighboring country for US and they provide about 10.8 million migrant workers to US. Next is obviously India. We provide 2.7 million people to US as migrant workers. And again keep in mind as I mentioned US is one of the biggest software uh, development area and india produces most number of software engineers in the world so obviously india is going to export or send a lot of software engineers to us next is china little bit behind india is china at 1 so 2.1 million people and number 4 number 4 just a little bit behind china is philippines that provides 2.06 million people Next, next, let's talk about Germany. Germany has been the second most preferred destination by migrant, and it has also observed that an increase over the years from eight point nine million in two thousand to seventeen million in twenty twenty two. So Germany, after US, Germany has been the second most favorite place for most people. Now. 
again, they have also doubled their migrants over the years. In last 22 years from 2000, that was 8.9 million people working in Germany. By now they have 17 million people who came from different countries and are living in Germany. Now, these are the top countries who are providing those migrants. Poland, again, Poland is a neighboring country to Germany. They provide 2.1 million migrant workers. Turkey, again, Turkey is another neighboring country to Germany, standing at 1.8 million people. Russia, Russia provides 1.1 million workers and people who are migrating to Germany. Next is Kazakhstan. Again, at 1.1 million. Now let's talk about Saudi. Saudi is the third most preferred destination, especially for South Asians. South Asians, sure, uh, Sheikh Taib, I'll share the presentation with you, but let's continue. So Saudi has been the most preferred destination for South Asians. South Asian means countries like India, countries like Sri Lanka, countries like Pakistan, countries like Bangladesh. These are all South Asian countries. And Saudi has been their favorite destination, mainly because the ease of position, how easy it is to get a job in Saudi, and as well as the currency value. The currency does produce good amount, conversion amount in India. Now here are the top countries who are providing migrant, migrants to Saudi. Number one is India, providing 2.5 million people. Number two, Indonesia, 1.7 million people. Number three, Pakistan, 1.4 million people. Number four, Bangladesh at 1.2 million people. So these are the top four countries who are providing workers or migrants to Saudi. Now keep in mind, Saudi does not have a, a citizenship program, meaning you can work in Saudi for 15 years, for 20 years, but you will never get citizenship. So that is something that a lot of people do need to keep in mind if they're choosing Saudi. Now, let's talk about the top 10 in-demand job skills. What are the job skills that are currently highly in demand around the world, especially in these top 10 countries that we discussed. We're going to talk about those jobs and those skills. So let's talk about top 10 skills in demand for migrants. Obviously the number one skill, sorry, the number one skill is engineers. Any kind of engineer have an edge, have an upper hand for migration. Most countries these days prefer a lot of engineers. If you have a bachelor's in engineering or master's in engineering, definitely you can migrate to various different countries. Number two is skilled labor, that is manufacturing and production workers. If you have experience, if you have certification in any kind of manufacturing or production working environment, you are the second most in demand person. Number three, technicians, any kind of technician, electrical technician, mechanical technician, you know, electromechanical technician, you know, plumbers, electricians, etc. All these people are third highest demanding in people. Now keep in mind, you need to get certifications for them as well. It's not like you are an electrician by working at your home, okay, by fixing things at your home. You need to have proper certifications because most of these countries do not have a method of validating your experience. So a lot of time they depend on certification. So it's better if you can get certifi certified, you know, take a basic course, get certified. Okay, engineers will obviously will have their degree to show but manufacturing workers, technicians, there are a lot of courses provided by different uh, institutes. Get certified so that you can land a proper position if you're looking to move. IT staff. Now, I'm not talking about IT or software engineers. I'm talking about IT staff. 
there are a lot of different positions in IT industry which are not software engineering positions like admin, a lot of time admins or HRs, etc. Okay. These positions, if you have experience or if you have certifications in these areas, certification in administration, maybe come desktop admin or maybe office admin, or etc., or certified HR or you know BA in HR or MBA in HR, then you will find a lot of different positions as well. Next is sales representative. Sales representative is one kind of position where you will find these kind of jobs in almost every country any country that you go to you will find sales representative jobs why because each country will be selling something they will have their in-house uh, you know stores just like we have stores you know we have apple store we have car showrooms we have you know clothing malls etc all these places require what sales representative now if you have experience as a sales representative then it's going to be very easy for you to get a job in any country but again try to get some sort of certification in sales area as well or sales background or some return evidence of your experience recommendation letters something like that next is an upcoming skill this is a very new skill in the market digital and interactive media and communications mostly focused towards social media so if you are a digital marketer you have experience in digital marketing a lot of countries are uh, you know starting to accept digital marketers because everyone wants to have a good social media image every company wants to have a good social media image so if you are into digital marketing or media and communication Again, this position is going to be in demand. Next is healthcare and pharma. This is an evergreen position or evergreen field, you can say. People are always going to be there. People always get sick. Okay, you will get sick at least once a year, right? You will go visit a doctor at least once a year. Pharma and healthcare, if you have experience, if you have certification, if you have education in that background, there is a lot of scope for you but again you need to have proper education proper certification and proper experience keep that in mind next is biomedical sciences and biotechnology so now next after healthcare and pharma obvious option will be biomedical sciences especially because of covid 19 the research department in biology has or biomedicine has ex grown exponentially People are researching different ways, different viruses, not just COVID-19 now, but different viruses, upcoming challenges that human race can face. So these positions are in demand as well. And again, number nine is a, another evergreen position, accounting and finance. Accounting and finance will always be there. Why? Because all these things revolve around money. And generally, who takes care of your money? Your accountants. A company needs accountants. Software engineer might be there today, might not be there tomorrow. Manufacturing might be there today, might not be there tomorrow. But money will always be there for those companies because those companies are running for money. You know, they are working for money. So to manage that money, they will always require accountants and finance. Uh, finance background people but again keep in mind you need to have proper certification maybe a ca maybe a financial analyst certification or you know ca or fa and proper experience proper knowledge and especially most of these countries prefer that you have local knowledge because keep in mind every country has a different accounting law why because each country have their own taxes their own financial laws rules regulations decided by their own country's government indian laws will not apply to us right similarly they us will have their own accounting laws so it's preferred that you study little bit about that country's financial laws if you're looking to work as an accountant or financial analyst abroad. 
and lastly skilled labor as i mentioned earlier all the other skilled labor like plumbers electricians mechanics linemen mason construction worker every country is working towards development every country wants to build new infrastructure new buildings new monuments new tourist destination and they require a lot of workers for that so skilled labor is always going to be in demand as well now let's talk about top 10 jobs we so far we have discussed about skills but what specific jobs are in demand right now Obviously, number one is application development, software development, and AI developers, artificial intelligence. So these days, the, the, the industry is going toward data, data management, data migration, data science, and data engineering. And all that leads to AI, artificial intelligence. Deep companies are starting to utilize artificial intelligence in so many different ways that we cannot even imagine how they are using that information, how they're using that data to accurately predict the forecast of their company, of their product, everything. So obviously, if you are an application developer, like a mobile application, it can be a mobile application like for Android apps or iOS app for iPhones or desktop app or web apps. Application development is a good area. Software engineering, again, any kind of software engineer are in high demand. And lastly, AI developers, you know, artificial intelligent developers are in high demand right now. Again, number two is data science. Data science, data science is what leads to AI. So again, data science is in high demand as well. Automation and robotics engineering, you know? Automation and robotics is the future. Companies are looking various different ways to accurately produce different goods in the shortest amount of time. And right now they see robotics as the solution, removing humans and replacing them with robots in manufacturing. A lot of different companies have already established that as well. They are using various different machines and robots to manufacture their goods, but again, there is still a lot of research and development that is still required in this area. So if you are interested in automation and robotics, go for it, study about it, get certified, and you can land very good positions in multiple different countries across the world. Next is human resources. As long as there are going to be jobs, there are going to be HRs, and there is going to be a demand for HR. So if you are in HR, if you have experience as an HR, like myself, if you have a certification in human resource, if you have an MBA in HR like myself, then you are uh, going to find yourself with a lot of different opportunities, not just in India, but across the world. In almost every country, there is a demand for HR because every country has jobs. Every country has their own companies and that is going to be in demand. Someone, every company needs someone to manage their employees, to hire employees, to manage, to fire, to maintain everything. Next is financial analyst. So CA and financial analyst are evergreen positions and they are always going to be in demand. Next is construction engineer. As I mentioned, a lot of countries are moving towards infrastructure development, maybe for great monuments, maybe, Every country wants to build a world, world's biggest or world's tallest, you know, building, statue or something. Every country is in that race and every country wants different construction engineers. Medical technicians and RNs. Medical, if you have experience or certification as a medical technician or RN, that is a registered nurse. Again, you will find a lot of different positions, especially in Gulf area like Saudi, Dubai, Qatar, etc. Next is manufacturing engineer. Again, all the things that we use are manufactured by someone. Okay, it can it might have been manufactured in India, in China, in you know, in Japan, in Singapore, or in Taiwan or somewhere, but they those things have been manufactured. And each country wants to bring manufacturing in their own uh, you know, country. Just like India, we want to bring uh, you know, all the manufacturing in India, make in India, pro, you know, uh, make in India campaign that's going on. 
every country wants to bring manufacturing within their own country why because you will save a lot first of all a lot in uh you know export and import taxes second thing if you're building something uh in in-house if you're building career you know manufacturing something within your country then you have a chance to sell it to different countries export it and make money for the country so manufacturing engineers are again always are going to be in demand as long as there's manufacturing next is cyber security engineer cyber security engineers is a very new skill okay it's a very new skill in the market but it is becoming one of the most demanding position and i'm pretty sure within next five years it will be in top three why because everyone needs cyber security engineers these days to maintain security to maintain online security especially because everything is online these days you have your social medias your social medias require security you have your bank accounts those are online those need security you have your all your confidential information online everything is online these days and with that comes a lot of hackers to fight those hackers to prevent those hackers you need cyber security engineers so if you're looking for a for a skill which is a guaranteed position in next 20 years then go with my recommendation will be cyber security engineer do your education do your certification in cyber security you can land very big positions with very big salaries across the world with you know scope of realistic future you know job security and number 10 is management consultant or business analyst as long as there are going to be people working there there will be some they will they will require managers and business analysts so if you are into management management get an get a certification in management or get a certification in business analysis and you will get a lot of positions so these are the top 10 jobs that are in demand right now any questions from you guys so far No questions? Sir. Yes, sir. Sir, what is the difference between a business analysis and data analysis? So business analysts, you will have multiple different kinds of business analysts. Okay, business analysts is more focused towards evaluating your business and growing your business. Data analyst will only focus towards data. Okay business analysts will utilize a lot of different things you know they will have discussion with stakeholders shareholders they will have uh, they will look at the market trends not just by data but they will also look at the market trend by product and by uh, you know by in-house workers by external workers they will look at the company as overall data analysts are more accurate Data analysts are more accurate, but they are limited to specific criteria. They can only rely on data. So let's say you have a company, you're, you sell a lot of smartphones, okay? You sell a lot of smartphones, okay? You manufacture and sell. A data analyst can tell you exactly which phone was sold, you know, highest amount of time and which phone is in demand, which phone is a flop for your for your company based on the number of sales that happen a business analyst can tell you what should be your next product using the data provided by data analysts they will evaluate they will compare with our competitors you know similar companies who are producing smartphones they will provide you your next product so they both sound same similar kind of position but they are entirely into different fields to become a data analyst, you need to be a software engineer. To become a business analyst, you don't need to be a software engineer unless you're looking to become a business analyst in a software company. A lot of non-software companies require business analysts as well. Okay, so... What are the needed to become a business analyst? So, um, most business analysts need to have at least an MBA in business management. Okay. okay. So most companies. What are the skills mm -hmm. like MS Excel or another some tools? Sir. What are the tools? Skills, as I said, MBA in business management. 
you need to have mba in business management that is at minimum to become a business analyst and now it depends on what industry that you're targeting are you targeting automotive auto, uh, automotive industry are you ta- targeting manufacturing goods and service food and hospitality or software now depending on that industry you need to select your field and field of education so there is not one specific skill or field depending on which you know area or which domain that you are selecting if you are looking to go into medical sciences or uh, business analyst for medical industry business analyst for pharma industry business analyst for automotive industry business analyst for telecom industry each industry will have dis- different criteria obviously let's say if you want to become a business analyst for telecom industry you need to have some sort of electrical engineering knowledge or certification or education in electrical engineering because you are working in electrical engineering position uh, you know telecom is electrical engineering basically so depending on which field or domain that you're selecting obviously if you're selecting medical business analyst for medical or pharma industry it you need to have some sort of pharma and certification or medical education similarly if you're looking to become a business analyst for it company then you need to have a software engineering background so depending on which field that you're selecting you need to have that kind of background and experience and knowledge now let's move on to our next agenda white collar versus blue collar okay and reasons behind migrations so i hope all of you understand what are blue collar jobs and what what are white collar jobs white collar jobs are generally desk jobs where you will be sitting on a desk working on a laptop or a computer or a desktop or something okay where you don't need a lot of labor work okay blue collar jobs are mostly considered as labor position okay and the reasons behind those migrations now let's talk about top 10 uh, give me one second now let's talk about top 10 countries that hired for blue collar first let's talk about blue collar then we we'll talk about white collar again blue collar job all these positions labor positions are considered as blue collar whether you're working as a construction worker laborer electrician mechanical technician or something plumber or all these are considered as blue collar singapore is the number one country which hires blue collar job Germany is number 2 again mostly because of electricians and mechanics and mechanical engineers UAE is number 3 mostly for construction workers if you are into construction or any kind of construction working UAE should be the destination Australia again Australia has a specific blue collar position especially if you have experience or background or knowledge in hospitality Australia has a lot of cruises a lot of ship work which requires blue collar workers so if you are looking to work on a ship on a yacht on a cruise australia should be your destination again saudi will be for mainly considered for constructions uk uk has various different kind of blue collar positions including anywhere from various different kind of electrician workers sanitation workers basic position like waiter or cleaner to till high level positions like you know manufacturing supervisors or manufacturing engineers etc france is another a blue collar hit switzerland is also accepting a lot of blue collar canada now canada has been one of the most favorite for blue collar position but you need to have specific skill you need to be in specific age criteria and you need to have proper education background to get positions in canada and lastly is us now let's talk about white collar countries which are hiring most amount of white collar people obviously number one is us mainly because of the software development people software development industry number two is canada again mainly because software development number 3 uk again because of software development number 4 is japan mainly because of electrical mechanical and software engineers australia mainly because of accounting side but also software and different kinds of engineers germany mainly because of mechanical engineers france mainly because of soft a mix of different engineers and cas and accounting and you know management positions saudi again 
they are accepting a lot of CAs, a lot of nursing, a lot of teaching position these days. Singapore, again, similar as Saudi. UAE, again, similar. So these were the top 10 countries which are hiring for white collar. Now let's take a look at blue collar and white collar. What are the advantages and disadvantages of those two positions? So we will be comparing blue collar with white collar. We will be looking at their environmental impact, travel impact, and individual impact. So people where they're facing challenges because of the environment or facing advantages or getting advantages because of environment, travel and travel advantages and disadvantages and individual advantages and disadvantages. So for blue collar, economic growth will be a big advantage for blue collar because imagine you're working as a labor, as a construction worker in India. How much you, will you be earning? Maybe 200, 300, 400 rupees per day, at max 500 rupees per day. But for the same position, if you're working in Saudi, Dubai, you know, UAE or Singapore or Canada or somewhere else, you will be earning in dollars, at least like something like 12 or 13 dollars per hour. Most of these countries pay on hourly basis. So at least, you know, 12 to 13 dollars per hour let's say in canada if you're earning 13 dollars per hour that's that's like seven to eight hundred rupees per hour not per day per hour so that one day income this person will be able to earn that within one hour next thing is job opportunities there are a lot of positions obviously in india as well but there are a lot of positions in different countries as well they, it will give them opportunities to work in different countries it will help them build their network and affiliations now there is one environmental disadvantage for blue collar that is culture and social distancing a lot of people who move especially for blue collar job tend to miss their culture of their home country hometown home state home city as well as their family and friends who were left behind in that country for white collars it's mostly advantages because first of all job security white collar positions you get uh, you get a lot of positions with job, good amount of job security second is improvement in life quality again they will be more earning money in dollars or dirham or something whatever country there they are working in and they will be able to convert that for a huge amount of money when they make a conversion to Indian rupees. So their life quality will improve. Social and uh, a lot of people will think that for white collar positions, culture and social distance will be an impact, but generally it's not because usually when people are working on white collar position, they tend to migrate their family with them within one year or two years of them going to that country. Let's say you went to US as a software engineer on a white collar position. You will easily be able to afford to bring your entire family to US along with you. So that is why a lot of people who are working in white collar environment will not feel cultural and social distance. Next, talking about travel, <clears throat> blue collar people will definitely face a lot of disadvantage in terms of travel. First of all, the transportation cost. Uh, you have to keep in mind, even if they're, when they're making money in dollars, let's say in US or Canada, still they will have to bear the uh, transportation cost and that is very expensive. And the salaries for these positions are very low. Con comparing to India, that's very high, but comparing to their local environment, the, those salaries are going to be very low. So the cost of transportation is going to be very hectic for blue collar jobs. Same thing, blue collar job people tend to travel very long distances. Tend to travel very long distance distances mainly because of one reason. Definitely because they are not making enough money. They need to find a place which is very cheap and they need to pay, find a job which is going to pay the highest amount. And for that, they are willing to travel 20, 30, 40 miles per day. That, that translates to two hours per day as well. They're willing to travel two hours per day for, for cheaper accommodation and better salary. 
Now, that is not a problem mainly for white collar jobs because they are making enough money to find a place to find to rent a house nearby their job. They have that kind of flexibility. But again, it depends on what kind of position, what kind of salary they're earning. Individuals. Now, individual challenge a person can face or benefit a person can face is income. So mostly blue collar jobs, the benefit they feel individually is income. They are making much more income in, while working abroad. That is why they choose to work abroad. Now, for white collar people, the reason they choose to work abroad is for stability, first of all, and second of is for professional development. A lot of white collar people would like to build their network, would like to have a stable position at which provide professional growth or development. And a lot of people feel like when they work abroad, they get these kind of things <clears throat> in white collar positions. So this has been our topic for today. Top 10 countries where, which are hiring, top 10 countries which are people preferring to migrate, migrate, who are producing migrate, top 10 skills in demand, top 10 jobs in demand, and advantages and disadvantages of blue collar and white collar jobs. Thank you so much for your time. Again, I was your host, Sayyid Mayuddin. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on this email or on this phone number. Does anyone have any questions so far? Sure. Hello. Yeah, Shay. Sir, mm -hmm. sir, what is the process for degree attestation? For education yes. verification. So you have to keep in mind, let's say you studied in some university in India. Let's say Sikkim Manipal and University. You're moving to US. US does not, that company in US that you're going to work in has no idea how to verify whether your degree is genuine or not. So for that, you will get your degree attested. You will send it to WES or SES to get your education verified. And those companies will verify your degree and will take responsibility with your company that they have verified your education. So basically the reason for attestation is to get your education verified, to make sure that you have genuinely studied your bachelor's or master's, whatever degree that you're showing. And it's not a fake to verify that it's not a fake degree. That is the reason they, uh, you know, that is the reason for attestation. Sir, can we attest it our certificate or only we have to do our degree? You can attest your certificate as well, but mostly your degree is the thing that they are going to consider. If you don't have any degree, you have 10 certification, that company will not consider you. If you have one degree and maybe one or two certification, that company will definitely prefer you. So degree is required for most of the jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going for a blue collar position, then degree is not required, then certificates become more valuable. Again, as I said, for positions like electrician, mechanics, you know, linemen, construction worker, all these places, these kind of jobs, you don't require a degree. Degree is not required. In these places, you need to show certifications. So you can attest your certi certificates in these areas. But if you're looking for white collar position, then degree will come first. Okay. Any other question? Okay. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much for your time, everyone. It was really nice talking to all of you and have a wonderful rest of your day and wonderful weekend. Thank you.